Control Hats and welcome to a special chapter of It's a Mod Mod World. I have to start thinking about changing the name of this playlist as I'm not presenting any mod. I went this weekend to the Sim Racing Expo in the Nuevo thing and I took a look around. I went to the Sim Racing Expo especially to check for motion rigs, the holy grail of every Sim Racer. So you will see a lot of motion rigs in here, but also impressions of other things. And while the Sim Racing Expo is quite young and therefore not everybody is taking part yet, there were a couple of uh, very recent resounding names in there. Porsche was there as one of the sponsors with a simulator based on R Factor 2. I have the proof. Race Room was also there with a wonderful sentiment against racism and xenophobia that I gladly show you here. And here we have Manuel Stiedl who also has a YouTube channel. Say hello Manuel. R Factor 2 was there. Of course there were sim races taking place. And if you ever wanted to see how a professional sim race stream is made, here you have it. There was Fun Attack, there was Alter Racer. Heusingveld, iRacing was there too, and of course, Assetto Corsa Competizione was the talk of the trade. And a big friendly atmosphere because we all want the same, we want to beat the other. Uh, we want to race against each other and have fun. But as I said, I went there to find more about motion rigs, and for that I met with representatives of SimTech, Pesaro and Imsim. As luck will have it, meeting with representatives of these three companies meant a short trip through Europe. You'll see what I mean. Let's start with Simtag, a company that started in Hungary but moved to Belgium and is now at Spa. One of the co-founders of the company is Norbert Michelisch, who some of you may know because he was for a long time a WTCC driver. And what many people do not know is he started playing a Grand Prix Legends. Together with being one of the co-founders, Norbert gives feedback and brings other drivers to test. The SimTech motion rig is set up in a modular way, so you can buy bits and pieces or put your bits and pieces that you already have inside of the motion rig. But SimTech prefers to deliver everything so that they can provide what they consider the better setup. If you're interested in SimTech, be ready to have a space 150 times 150 times 150 centimeters because that is the measurement of the rig. The SimTech motion rig has no side movements and while you can use it for example for flight sims, their main focus is on movements for racing sims. And be prepared to spend around 14,000 euro. The highest price is 45,000. You'll get intensive support 24-7 and you will be able to talk directly to a technician with two years warranty. For those interested in some uh, technical information, the motions are controlled by a D-Box. D-Box reading the telemetry, then going through some fine tuning and filtering until it ends in the SimTech actuators. As the actuators are moved by the simulation telemetry, it means that you can use mods for your favorite sim and if the mods work with the sim the sim tag works with the mods something special to sim tag is that the pedals and if you choose to get one the handbrake are hydraulic oh and observe one funny detail this motion rig has braking lights i tested a sim tag motion rig on a three monitor configuration running Assetto Corsa Competizione and the first thing that I had to do was to get accustomed that I had to press the braking pedal much stronger than I am accustomed to. So first thing that I did on the first curve of Nürburgring was go straight. 
in spite of that, I was allowed to continue testing the SimTech motion rig. And I have to say, it was very interesting, but I would have wished the motion to be a little bit stronger. I was told by Janos that you can configure the strength of the motion as you can configure many other parameters of the SimTech motion rig. Moving to Great Britain by the way of Malta, I had the enormous pleasure of having a long chat with Neville Slate, founder and boss of Vesaro. The Vesaro rigs are concentrated on the premium market, are concentrated on being a polished product. Nevertheless, the cheapest rig comes at a price of 824 British pounds, but then you have to put everything together yourself. The first already built up rig costs around 1000 British pounds. The first motion rig costs 15,000 British pounds. And sky's the limit, well, not that much, but if you want to sit in a replica of a Formula One car and use your Sims, it's gonna cost you around 100,000 British pounds. Besaro's focus is on quality and modularity. They give a 10 year warranty for the chassis and with every product comes a free support 24 seven where you talk directly with a technician and there is no call center, nobody with a script going through the script and going through the motions. By the way, an anecdote that Neville told me, their first customer, their first customer is still adding modules seven years later. Having started in 3D design, uh, Neville wanted to go more to being able to do these designs touchable, and he put together his passion for gaming, racing, sports cars into making a sim rig and a motion sim rig with the focus and concentrating on, and I quote, making it more beautiful. The company has doubled in size every year since it started, so it seems that that focus was a good idea, as their system translates into motion the telemetry coming out of the sim through a D-box and some filters. There's no problem at all if you put some mods inside of your system and raise that mod. You can even add stuff to your computer. For example, for me, it would be very interesting to, of course, put some recording software so I could do my videos on that computer. The focus on modularity also helps because if you already have a good wheel or a good set of pedals or your favorite computer or you already have VR, you can just, so to speak, plug and play it to what they have or send it to them so that they plug and play it into the rig that they are building for you. The modularity also helps in not having the Vesaro motion rigs working only for racing sims, but also for, for example, flying sims. They do mixed simulators. I tested a Vesaro rig that was running Project Cars 2, a game that I don't know much, and the Vesaro rig threw me around like a bronco. I think it was a tad too much, while the sim tag was a tad not enough, this was a tad too much. And because it was Project Cars 2, I wasn't able to have a big relationship with what was happening on the monitors, as we all know that Project Cars and Project Cars 2 don't have the best physics. It was an interesting and fun ride but I didn't get the feedback from the system and maybe as I said it's because of the game that was running on it as I did from the sim tag. Last but not least comes the Imsim motion rig. Imsim is a company from Portugal so as you see we've gone from Hungary to Belgium to Malta to Great Britain and now we are in Portugal. Imsim is a family business and was branched out from a company that built auto parts. The owner had a passion for racing cars and look around what he could do that had to do with auto parts and with racing and came out 
2015 with the idea of making a motion rig. The special thing about the founding of Imsim and its motion rig is that the Imsim motion rig had to pass the wife convincing test as every other system was deemed only good enough for the garage. So Imsim spent 1 million euro in developing a motion rig that anybody would like to see and that you can put in your house and not only in the garage. While Imsim is more vying for the commercial business, they of course have nothing against catering for single users with prices starting at 15,000 euro and going up to 65 thousand euro other than the hole in your bank account you have to make space of about 2.5 square meters to be able to place the imsim motion rig it's quite modular and contrary to simtech and Vesaro does not use a dbox but their own software and their own system for motion the warranty for the imsim motion rig is two years extendable to five but imsim is thinking about extending the guaranteed to 10 years. As I was told, they have two units in Abu Dhabi Ferrari world that are visited by around 20,000 people and are quite happy with the way the Imsim rigs are holding steady. Of course, as with all the other motion rigs, you can install your mod and if the racing sim is able to use the mod, the Imsim motion rig is also able to use the mod. As I said, they have their own motion software. This means that you can use own profiles, that you can change profiles depending on which car or car type you are using for your race and that you can change the outputs. In fact, in my test of this motion rig, Tiago Ribeiro was friendly enough to change some of the inputs or more specifically of the outputs by changing the software. One interesting thing about the Imsim motion rig is they have one butt kicker per tire. Therefore, you feel what is happening with which tire on any given moment of a race. And and while flight sims are not supported yet, they are in the roadmap, but I was told at some point that they were not willing or able to disclose. For my test of the Imsim, I run a one monitor configuration that was running Assetto Corsa Competizione and found the thing with the one butt kicker per tire very interesting because I really felt what was happening in each and every one of the tires at every moment, which gave the whole thing a very interesting perspective. So there you go, you have three motion rigs, all at around the same price, at least at the beginning level. You have SimTech, which emphasizes realism, precision, and of course has the hydraulic pedals and handbrake. You have Vesado with emphasis on design, robustness with a 10 year guarantee. And Variety, one of the rigs they had was running Forza Motorsport. And you have Insim where the software is highly configurable. It has the four butt kickers that simulate each of the four tires and is all in all different from the others beginning with the design. I would like to thank very much Janos, Neville and Tiago for taking the time to talk to me and explain things to me extensively and for letting me test their systems. I gotta say, using a motion rig is an interesting proposition. Contrary to what happens with VR, I don't think it's gonna help you raise better. I don't think it's gonna help you in any way to be faster. What it does help, of course, is with the immersion of the racing situation. Now, if this is worth the about 10,000 euro or more that it's gonna cost you, it's something that you have to decide for yourself. I don't suppose that most of us have 10,000 laying around in their bank accounts ready to be spent at any moment. So something like the Sim Racing Expo is a good opportunity to test if A, a motion rig is something for you, B, 
if that motion rig is what you're searching for and see maybe to try to convince your significant other to allow you to spend that money. So while you're pondering on that and trying to hide from your significant other that you're trying to put the money aside, that would be all for today. If you have further questions about these motion rigs, please write them in the comments and I will see to it that I either answer them myself or I ask the companies and deliver the answers also in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please be so kind and applaud by leaving a like. If you want to see more of us and we're publishing at least two videos per week, subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell. And until then, save fuel, pick up rubber, and we'll see each other at the podium. Visit romrom.net to connect to fellow sim racers and sim racing fans.